What's going on? It's Ray with TrueMission.com. I am super excited to be with you today. I truly believe that God has huge things in store for your life and that your best days are ahead of you. You know, I want to open up today with a question, and that is what can we learn from those that have given up? What can we learn from those that have given up so that we don't follow suit? I mean, if we're looking at the mistakes of others and looking at those mistakes and saying to ourselves, okay, I can either follow suit and, and make the same mistake myself, or I can learn something, something valuable that, that I don't have to follow in the same footpath that, that they went in. You know, I read over in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 28, well, verses 28 through 29, Paul's writing here and he says, so we tell others about Christ warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfect in the relationship to Christ. That is why I struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. I love this phrase because Paul says that there is an energy, there is a power source that's working within him. There's this divine energy within Paul. It's the Spirit of God that's within all of us that energizes us and propels us forward to keep us going in all that God has for us. The question becomes is, why do some give up then? If they have this energy source inside of them, why aren't they living out their mission and being the best them that God has called them to be? What is keeping them from moving forward? Well, I get some hints over in Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 11 and, and in chapter 12. It gives us some great insights into what's taking place. So let me turn over there in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. I'll start in chapter 12 verse, with verses 1 through 2. Okay, This may be a familiar passage of Scripture to many of you. Verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Why do some give up? Well, there's some things I learned from these verses that, that I get, think give us great insight into to why some give up. You see, the first one is this. I, I believe that some give up because they lose their frame of reference. That is, they have forgotten the sacrifices of those that have gone before them. The writer of Hebrews says, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, you realize that there are others who have gone before you that are watching from the grandstands of heaven and are cheering you on right now. In fact, I don't have time to read it today, all of it, but Hebrews chapter 11 is often referred to as the Faith Hall of Fame. That is, there, one character after another after another, the scripture mentions of the great things that they did for God by stepping out in faith. I think of what verse, uh, verse 32, verse 32 says, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount all the stories of faith. But the writer goes on and he says that, that it was by their faith that they overthrew kingdoms. They ruled with justice. They received God's promises in their life. Some shut the mouths of lions. Others quenched the flames of fire. And many escaped death. Many were strong in battle. But I want you to notice what the writer of Hebrews says down in uh, verse 39. He says, All of these earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us. So they would not reach perfection without us. You know, some give up because they, they lose sight of the others that have gone before them. And I'm telling you right now, there are others who went before you. 
and sacrificed so much. They gave so much of their life and they're looking at you right now. They're looking at you right now and saying, man, I believe that if I could make it, you can make it. Don't forget the, the Hall of Fame. You know, sometimes when I'm going through a battle in life, I remind myself not only of what God has done in my life, but I also remind myself of what God has done in the lives of those he loves. I look back at these stories and I think to myself, man, God, if you did it for them, I know you'll do it for me. You see, if you succeed, I want you not to forget the God who got you there in the first place. And if you fail, don't throw in the towel. You see, there are too many people that have worked with far less and kept going in hopes that you would move the torch further down the field than they have. God, give us a frame of reference. Give us a frame of reference where we, we keep going because we remember all those that have gone before us. You know, I see that some give up because they refuse to let go of a weight that they weren't called to carry in the first place. You see, if you're going to be a marathon runner, I don't know much about being a marathon runner because I don't like to, I don't like to walk across the street and check my mail. I send the kids to do that. Man, I don't want to run, okay? Now, but what I hear, okay, if you're a marathon runner, there are certain things you can't eat or take in which is, you know, part of maybe the reason why I'm not a marathon runner because there are certain things I won't eat, but there are certain things you can't take, eat or take in. Why? Because it will slow you down from the race. I think the same could be said of our spiritual health. There are things that we carry that we weren't meant to carry. In fact, like the scripture says in verse 1, He's, the, the writer of Hebrews says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. You know, it's hard to go all out for God when you're weighed down by junk. What's the thing that's weighing you down? What's the junk that's preventing you from going full throttle with God? Is it sin? Is it regret? Is it shame? Is it guilt? Is it the pursuit of an idol, the pursuit of something other than the mission of God in your life? It's hard to go all out when you're weighed down by junk. Let me give you the third reason I see that some give up. Some give up because they take their eye off of the main thing. They lose sight of the object of their focus. The writer of Hebrews is really clear. In verse 2, he says, We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. We fix our eyes on Jesus. You see, Jesus is not, is not only the one who called us. He's the one that will sustain us. He's not only the one that thought us up. He's the one who carries us through to the end. That is, he's going to give you everything you need in this journey to accomplish everything that he's called you to accomplish. Yours is to strip off everything that weighs you down and keep moving forward. Let me give you the fourth reason why I see that some give up. I believe that some give up because they've lost hope. They lose sight of just how close they are to victory. I think of what the writer says in verse 2. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. That is, he didn't give up. Because of the joy awaiting him, he didn't quit. He didn't back down. You know, the word endure means to bear bravely and calmly. And what would our lives be like if we faced every obstacle with the understanding that my God will supply all of my needs? No matter what I'm facing, God's going to get me through this thing. I can endure 
anything that life tries to throw my way to prevent me from moving forward into what God has called me to be. I will bear it bravely and calmly and not give up. It reminds me of a story I once heard about a man who was obsessed with this treasure that he heard was buried in this field. So he sold everything he had to buy the land that the field sat on. He didn't know where to start. He just knew that somewhere in this field, there was some buried treasure. So he got a shovel and he started digging. Year after year after year passed by. In fact, after many years, now he was an old man. After many years, he was looking out in this field, holes dug everywhere. He jumps down into the hole to, to uh, the hole that he was working on to dig some more. He puts the shovel in. He says, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I quit. He climbed out of the hole and he went to sell the property. A young man comes along and he says, sir, is it true? I heard that there's treasure possibly buried in this field, in a field, in this land that you own. The old man responded to the young man. He said, yeah, there, there, it's, I've heard the same. It's, it's a story I've heard. I, I spent my life chasing it. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. I gave up. Don't even, don't even try. The young man was insistent and he bought the property from the old man. He walked out onto the field and he saw all of these holes that this man had dug. Not knowing where to start, he saw a shovel in a hole that the man had, had quit on. He climbed down into the hole, he, he moved a shovel full of dirt, he stuck the shovel back down into the ground and he hit something solid. Got down on all fours and began to uncover the earth and sure enough, there was the buried treasure just one shovel away. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Who knows, you may just be one shovel away from the promise, one moment away from the thing that God has promised in your life. Don't give up now. Endure. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Your true mission begins in a relationship with Jesus. To find out more about this, check out the video entitled, I'm with Jesus. If you're new to our channel, we upload videos every week, so be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell notification. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.